I'd just like to start this morning by just thanking Ray Walker for being our minister of youth and all that he does for us. Um, I'd also just like to thank you as a congregation for giving the youth an opportunity uh, like this to actually show how we've grown in the past year, just the way we can be a servant and a youth of the church, and we just thank you all for that. Um, I'd just like to start in a, word, in a word of prayer, please. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day, and we just praise your name right now, Father. I just pray right now, Lord, that you would just be with me and just uh, anoint me with your Holy Spirit as I uh, talk and tell these people exactly what you've given to me. I pray that you would let me be a reflection of you, Lord, that other people could see you and me. I just pray right now that uh, we might be able to take these things um, in all the different aspects of our lives, that we can use this in any different situation. And uh, all this I ask in your name, amen, Lord. A few weeks ago, our family had a problem. Our, <clears throat> our car that we had, we, we would get in the car, and we'd look all over the place, and, and just something just sensed that it was wrong. There was just something dead wrong. We just didn't know what the deal was. Uh, like some odor of some kind had taken shape. So we looked all over the car. We couldn't find it anywhere. We, we didn't know where in the world it was. Uh, we looked in the trunk. We couldn't find it in there. We looked under the seats and all the little hooks and crannies and all that kind of stuff. And finally, <clears throat> with the source of a big flashlight, big light, we went into the trunk and found out that it had gotten caught underneath the little carpet right there. It was one of those orange juice containers from one of the grocery stores we've been to. They gotten really ripe after about four weeks, and we got to throw it away. But the whole time we were just like, well, there's a problem, but where, where is that problem? We just couldn't exactly put our finger on it. I didn't know what the source was. Today in America, the man on the street, we're going to look really quick just what the man on the street thinks of as a, as a Christian. There was a recent article in the, in the Wall Street Journal that makes reference to Michael Griffin, who was the man who in Florida killed the abortionist last week. It also talks about David Koresh, who is the man over in Waco, Texas, holding his cult captive in that compound, and who he claims is Jesus Christ. And today in the media and, and all over the U.S., when people look at a Christian, what do they see? They see a wacko in Waco or, you know, or some radical fanatic, which isn't us at all. In schools, I wonder how many of you were involved in school in the 50s and 60s? Anybody? I mean, <laughs> at all? There was another, another little thing that came out here. In a recent study that was talking about the seven most violated rules in the 50s and 60s, and it starts out with, with talking, chewing gum, making noise, running in the halls, getting out of line, Wearing improper clothing, and oh, the big one, not putting paper in the wastebasket. So. But nowadays, hasn't, hasn't that changed? I mean, something is really starting to smell here just a little bit. Because now, we look into the 80s, and we see that instead of talking now, we have drug abuse. And instead of chewing gum, we have alcohol abuse. Instead of running in the halls, which was a problem back then, we have pregnancy. Instead of getting out of line, we have suicide. Instead of wearing improper clothing, we have robbery. And not putting paper in the wastebasket, we have assault. 
on teachers, students, everything of that sort. And I ask you the question, judging by that, are things in America, are they getting better or are they getting worse? What, I mean, make your own decision on that. Also, the homosexual movement that is now trying to ban Colorado for their stand on homosexuals and not allowing them to have special rights and privileges as any other couple, and also their involvement in trying to get into the military. A recent article was quoted as saying, Homosexual advocates are not satisfied with the protection offered under federal anti-discrimination laws. They want much more, including the right to sanction marital unions protected by the same legal privileges according, accorded heterosexual couples. It also states that Colorado is just the beginning, where you think that we're, oh man, we're swamped right now. Colorado is only the beginning. The opposition we face will likely be both determined and broad. Yet, as homosexual rights continue proliferating, the few remaining threads holding together the moral fiber of our society are being shredded. I mean, back in the, back in the 50s and 60s, we had the civil rights. We're fighting for civil rights. Now we're fighting for sexual rights in the 90s. And how does that one, also how does that one smell to you as things are gradually getting worse and worse and worse? Even in a church of this size, um, with abortion, how we've been fighting that so much, the smell of death is, is in the air as well. The new RU486 drug that has been banned for some time over in England and Europe and all that kind of stuff, or, or for U.S., they have now talked about it in in a recent U.S. news article, it talks about the availability that will be pretty soon. It's talking about the Food and Drug Administration that could essentially bring this market or this drug to the market. It says, the chosen group can complete safety trials and submit an application for new drug approval to the FDA before year's end. That's this year. FDA officials say that they could complete their review procedure in record time, just four to six months, meaning that RU486 is likely to reach American women by the summer of 1994. It also goes on to state, for all the people who are into uh, count, or counseling at clinics and for rescuing and that sort of thing, it's going to make it even harder. The, av the availability of RU486 is likely to eliminate many of the tribulations now associated with surgical abortions. Because any trained doctor can administer RU486 pills, women will no longer need to travel long distance or to confront abortion opponents at the doors of specialized clinics. And they also go on to say that America is not the stopping point. America is not their goal. They're trying to go through America to the world. And this is, this is where we need to make our stand. Isn't it nice to know, they talk about the war, how the war could be over. Isn't it nice that the war would be over, only that we're going to be the losers? Also, in, in the area of, of Hollywood and movies, in 1939, Clark Gable was given the distinguished honor of saying the first swear word in a movie. And today, movies have gone so much past that. It says here, um, the entertainment industry has declared war on traditional values. It also talks about um, violence. And it says right here, this addiction to violence, which comes in increasingly intense poisonous doses, is so destructive, so obvious, and so ugly, it seems breathtaking that people can pretend that the situation hasn't worsened enormously. Something is really starting to stink here. We, we can't find what it is. What is it? It's, it's in our society. It's in all of our moral values that are going downhill. What, what is it? Well, let's, let's refresh our memories to what God wants us to do about that. Let's look in uh, Matthew 5 for just a few minutes here. Verse 
versus, well, we'll just start from the beginning. Okay, Matthew 5. This is talking about the Beatitudes, and Jesus is talking to his disciples. And it says in verse 1, Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, and <clears throat> the implication is he's on a mountainside, he's with his disciples, probably you know, pretty sweaty, just giving them instruction on in what they're supposed to be doing in this world. And then he goes through, and he <clears throat> gives the, the Beatitudes that everybody has probably heard a few times before. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Um, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then down in 13, he gives them a specific thing that they, that they are, that they might have neglected. It says in verse 13, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. In verses 13 and 14, it talks about that you are the salt of the earth. But who is you? Who, you know, who is he talking about there? Well, he was talking to his disciples, which in turn today were his disciples. We we're supposed to be, we're, we're the you that he's talking about, the Christians. He also goes on to say, you are the salt, you are the light, which is not saying that you will be the salt, maybe later on down the road, or <clears throat> are you that kind of thing. But he says that you are the salt, present tense. Right now, you are the salt and you are the light. And where are we supposed to be the salt and the light? It says in verse 13, salt of the earth. In verse, four, or verse uh, 14, yes, you are the light of the world. So where should, should, where should we be salt and light? You know, I'm, <clears throat> I have this little Morton ionized salt here. <clears throat> if this salt stays in this container, will it be of any use to anybody? No. If we... If we all stay in here, are we any use to anybody else out in the world? No. The salt has to come out of the container to be the salt and the light of the world. But some of you are asking, but how, you know, what are different ways that I could be salt and light in this world? I mean, you said I, I'm supposed to be salt and light, but what, it, what exactly does that mean to me? What am I supposed to do? Uh, well, I came up with a few different illustrations here for different different groups of people that they can actually, in, in their different ways, they can become the salt and the light. What is a what is a aspect of salt, if I was to get a little bit of this out and accidentally get it in my eye or something like that, what what exactly would happen to it? Would would it just sit there and I'd just you know go along real fine? No. The salt would get in my eye, and I would be watering, and oh, it would just be irritating. It would be oh, all over the place. Also, in the same way, I have my little light here. If you're <clears throat> if you're in the bed, and all of a sudden your mom just kind of opens the door a little bit, and you know, just a little bit of light in a darkened place can really just irritate you, just blind you. In the same way, to you kids at the at school right now. When peer pressure is on you because of the light and the salt that you have been, the reason why they're, they're trying to be on top of you is because you're irritating them. You're, you're, not, <clears throat> you're not being a help to them. You're, you're just showing them that what they're doing is wrong, and they want to change that in you. You need to be able to, if, if that pressure ever comes up, you need to be pushing that away, and you need to be even more salt and more light. Also, in, uh, in business, I have another article here real quick that was in, let's find it here. 
in the New York Times, which was a, a survey they did on certain businesses. And it was talking about how frequent churchgoers can be less likely to cheat employers. But you get down to one of the paragraphs and it says, among workers who attended religious services weekly, the number who reported ethically questionable acts were generally four to seven percentage points less than average. Only four to seven percentage points less. I mean, what kind of an impact is that salt and light in our workplace? We're not exactly being what, what God has wanted us to be. Another thing uh, with salt, if I was to have a wound or a cut or something and I was to put salt on it, it would promote the healing of that. Also with, uh, with the light, how many of you have been to Stone Mountain and that sort of thing? With a, with a laser, also with doctors, how they use lasers, where now they can use lasers to cut away cancer and all sorts of things that you really you wouldn't want. In the same way with a laser, to cut away what doesn't need to be there, that a, a business person can go into his business and try to be the salt and light by, if things are done wrong, try and get them right. Promote the healing in there. Cut away what doesn't need to be there. For children, all the kids that were up here, one of the, some of the things you can do. What happens when, when I put salt on a food? It totally changes the flavor of that food. It, it, it does not taste like you know just regular steak anymore. Now it's enhanced the flavor. It tastes like more like salt. Also with a light, um, that it only it only takes a spark to get a fire going. In the same way with children, with you when you're obeying your parents and you're becoming under their authority, people will will see you and see how that you're obeying your parents and how, how light and salt you're being, and that that will make your family become salty because of that. Because of one person in the family, it could make the whole family become what God wants them to be. Also to, oh, real quick, and I look at a verse for that, because it is so important when you're younger to, to make sure that you are the salt and the light you need to be. In Luke 16, verses 9 to 11. It talks a little bit about how important doing the right thing when you're younger is. It says, I tell you, use of worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone... Oh, wait, hold on. Okay. So when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Just to show that if you can be trusted when you're younger, when you grow up, you can be trusted with much in that sort of area. Also with uh, the staff here, that um, when... <clears throat> When salt gets on a wound, not only does it promote healing, but it also cleanses it. It also takes away, it also kills all the, the infection and that sort of thing. And in the same way, with a light, you know, you go into your doctor's office, goes in there, he, he examines, he examines the insides and that sort of thing. And in the same way, the, the staff can be the example to the congregation so that they can look at themselves and say, you know, how am I checking out here? You know, look at that. And also to, to cleanse all the wounds and that sort of thing. With, uh, with parents, with, uh, with salt. What is something if you have maybe scales on your eyes or even they have uh, special solutions and that kind of stuff that will, that will take off that stuff and with a light, Another, another thing with the light is it also, if I was in the darkness, it also helps me find my way if I'm going through, and that sort of thing. In the same way with parents, with you raising godly kids, <clears throat> they will be the light. Once you show them how to be the light, they can show others how to be the light. And also you help them um, 
by undoing their eyes, you become the salt to them and that sort of thing. Okay. All right, if we look back at uh, Matthew 5.16 real quick. It says, In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And our goal should be that in all we do, when we're being salt and light, that, that other people see Christ through us. That we're not... We're, the light isn't coming from us. The light is reflected from Christ and out to other people. And people need to see that. Um, with Joy's song this morning, I copied this down because this is very good. It, um, the end part of her chorus says, Oh Jesus, take and use me. Let those around me see that the thing that matters most in life, may they see you and me. And that's so true that we just need to be that salt and light so other people can see Jesus. That's the only way they're going to be able to. New Song has a song out that talks about how actions can be very powerful. It says that without a word, let him hear you speaking. Without a word, let him see Christ living in you. Live your life in such a way that there's no denying the change that he's made. Sometimes actions speak louder without a word. In the same way, not only just with your talk, but your walk kind of thing. We also need to be salt and light to our neighbors and to our friends in our country. In uh, 2 Corinthians 4... Four through six. It says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. And I ask you, in, in, uh, in verse 4, what is the God of this age? Look at your own life. What is, is there anything that you put above God? Could it be money or popularity or whatever? What, if you were to look at our society today, what would be the God of this age? They are, right now, those people are searching for something that they, they don't have in their own life. They have that God-shaped vacuum that they have. They're searching for the light switch. They're in the darkness. They're, they're trying to find how to get to it. And we're not being the salt and the light that we need to be to show them the way. Right now, we would rather be like the world. We would rather be in the darkness than to be in the light and to show them the way out of it. And the morals and the values of our country and society, the, the ones that I've talked to you about earlier, will just continually to be getting worse and worse and worse. Unless we as Christians are going to become the salt and the light that we need to be to our, to our country. Um, our theme for this week is, It's Your Move. In, let's see, in Matthew 27, real quick. Pilate is asking the people, um, when Jesus is on trial, who, who they would have. I mean, it says in verse 15, it starts, Now it was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who was called Christ? For he knew it was out of envy they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message, Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd and to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. 
Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ, Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. And today we have that same, we have that same question today. What am I to do with this person you call Christ? Are we going to accept him? Are we going to do what he says for us to do? Or are we going to reject him? It's your move. Is our country going to keep getting worse and worse because we have not been the salt and the light that we need to be? It's your move. Are our kids that are growing up, are they going to be able to see God in each one of our lives? I mean, even on my kids someday. Are they going to be able to look at my life and say, you know, he was the salt and he was the light that he needed to be so that, so that in turn, this country can get better and better and not worse and worse. All I'm going to say today is it's your choice and it's your move. Let's pray real quick. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this day and I just thank you for showing us, for picking us to be the light and the salt of the world, Lord. I pray that as salt we would not lose our saltiness. I pray that as light we would not cover up our light with anything, Lord. Help us to be lights in this world, to do what you would have us to. Help us in every different situation that we have, that we can show Christ through us in that way, Lord. And most importantly, Lord, I just pray for this country of ours, that we would not dwindle away, Lord, that we would be able to stand firm against these certain things that are trying to go up against your values and your morals, Lord. I pray that we as people would just make that decision. It's our choice, Lord. It's our move. What are we going to do for you? I'll ask in, this, in your name. <clears throat>